It's a Sunday morning and it's bloody freezing, but this is my 1991 Rover Metro known as Melvin. Now, Melvin is a full-on poverty spec Metro with exotic options such as a sunroof and a fancy radio and not very much else. Gonna start with the fun part. Let's go for a drive. Well, here we are with a proper phone mount that hopefully won't go on the piss. One of the first things you'll notice is the smooth, refined K-Series engine, which is so willing to rev all the way up to its 6800 RPM redline. And yeah, you could ask for it to be a little bit higher than that, but God, it's such a good little engine and it makes such a nice little noise. Once the engine's warmed up, I'll really let it, let it sing. This Metro has the 1.1 litre K-Series with eight valves, producing 60 brake horsepower. It's not a lot, but it really doesn't matter when the car weighs 815 kilos and the engine's so happy to rev. One of the most annoying things about the Metro is the trim rattles. And I'm assured that every Metro under the sun has a trim rattle somewhere. This one rattles from the latch that you use to fold down the rear seat. I should probably have a look at that. But I don't think I am. It's not actually that much of an inconvenience. It's slightly annoying sometimes, but, mm. but also the door pockets rattle as well. And you can't see I was pointing to the door pockets down there. The gearbox is easy to use and the ratios are pretty good, but you are constrained by only having four speeds in basic metros. First is quite short, allowing quick getaways from junctions. And fourth gear is good for cruising at any speed between 30 and 80. It's very, very versatile. And yeah, it does make some noise on the motorway, but it's not obtrusive. It's not too noisy. And that's not coming from a perspective of somebody who has driven this car and got used to it. The first time I ever got in this car and went on the motorway in it, I didn't find anything particularly wrong with it. What a great noise. The biggest annoyance when cruising isn't the lack of a fifth gear or anything like that, as the driveline's been designed pretty well. The problem is water in the wheel arches. The constant noise of water thrashing against the rear arches in the rain is pretty annoying and it could probably be solved by some sound deadening. Shame Rover didn't think of that. Now this foam mount seems to be turning out to be a disaster, but we're now on a twisty road. And the skinny 155 section tyres, despite having quite little grip, the chassis has loads of grip and so you can really, really punt it into corners and there is 60 miles an hour and it's the most fun you can have in a car it just grips it doesn't understeer and if you don't believe me drive one drive a well sorted k-series metro and you'll understand exactly what i mean it does not understeer of course if you really really provoke it you could get it to go The skinny tyres make the unassisted steering light, yet direct. It could maybe be a little bit more direct, but you quickly get a car that's slightly too twitchy to drive, considering the state of British roads, and that sometimes you just want to relax in the car. If you really barrel into a corner, you're met with a surprising amount of grip. It just holds on forever. The tyres let go way before the chassis does. It does feel very, very sorted, and it lures you in to start to trust it really very quickly. But that isn't a false sense of trust. It just does what you ask in the most joyous of ways. And you can wring its neck without going over any speed limits. Which is brilliant. It's a slow car, it's a very slow car, but it feels very quick. And I know that's a bit of a cliche. Everyone says, yeah, this whole slow car fast thing. But in a car that feels so small and so nimble and so agile and so light as this, and a car that bounces about the place a little bit. You feel like you are on the edge, but you never are. 
you're so far away from it because the chassis has so much grip. And the Metro is one of the most maligned cars of any kind ever. And I think unfairly so. I think some cars are maligned because they actually have proper issues. Whereas the Metro, yeah, it rusts a bit, but which car of this era doesn't rust? Um, but a lot of the automotive magazines said it was the best Super Mini in the class in 1990. Ten years after the Metro was introduced. A lot of the, the, these journalists were still saying that the Metro was the best car in the class. In fact, the Metro had become the best car in the class again, thanks to its K-series engine and revised hydro gas setup. And Autocar called it the best small car in the world. And that's pretty high praise from what is one of the most well-respected motoring magazines of all time. I did get a comment actually from somebody on that original Metro video, which this is meant to compliment, um, saying that I didn't have a clue what I was talking about because I said I used the words the best small car in the world. But those aren't my words. In, in a bit, not to sound too Alan Partridge, those aren't my words, they are the words of Autocar Magazine. And that's like nearly red line is second gear and I'm doing 35 miles per hour. It's brilliant. And it stems on from the kind of thing Chris Harris has been saying about his Peugeot 205 rally. And everybody says the 205 is the pinnacle of the way a small car drives. And that's fair enough. I've never driven a 205, so I can't say. But this era of super minis is still so basic. But God, they were making, making some good cars. And this is one of the better ones. The Mini is always described as one of the great handling cars, having won every motor race under the sun and the hearts and minds of millions of people. I've never driven a Mini, but I can't imagine it's much better than this. Part of the credit for this goes to the suspension, which is hydrogas. Google it if you're interested, but it consists of a displacer at each wheel with nitrogen, hydraulic fluid and a diaphragm between them to provide your suspension. This car has no shock absorbers or roll bars, everything is controlled by the hydrogas. Each side is independent, but the front displacers are connected to the rear ones on each side, making the car react when the front wheel hits a bump. It keeps the rear end very flat through the bends, where some cars can bob slightly and lose their balance. It's just a bundle of left to drive. It's such a little car and it's so light and it's so bouncy as well, that you feel like you're doing a million miles per hour. You should be careful, ice on the roads. And as much as the K-Series doesn't produce any kind of performance noise, it's quite high pitched, but it's a sweet, happy sounding engine. And no, the head gasket hasn't gone. Such a good engine. Uh, terrible road surface. Sorry for the shaky camera quality, but it's gonna it's just one of those things. Right, we're cruising now at 50 miles an hour and it's just a car. It just works. And so it can be this cheeky, eager little puppy that you want to have loads and loads of fun with. Or it can settle down and it's not its not a cruiser, of course it's not, it's a 1.1 litre Metro with a 4 speed gearbox, but it's surprisingly smooth. It's surprisingly smooth and it's surprisingly comfortable. Now that we've done the fun stuff, let's get into the ergonomics. As you walk up to the car you'll notice there is no central locking and it is quite annoying when you're trying to let a friend in but I quickly got over it. I'm not particularly bothered anyway as if it did have central locking it'd probably have broken by now. Keep fit windows also aren't a problem but the lack of cup holders is. How hard is it for manufacturers 
even in 2019, to design cup holders. It's so basic yet so useful. Every car seems to have an ashtray that just gets used as a coin holder. Every van has about 16 cup holders. So why doesn't every car just have bleeding cup holders? Uh, rant over. Inside it's all very basic, but these seats are exceptionally comfortable. The A-Series Metro, the Austin Metro, has had quite thin seats. Uh, tying it in with, you know, it, it's, a, it's an economy car. But when they put a Rover badge on it, um, Rover were still a company with some kind of prestige and some reputation that they were trying to uphold. And so they couldn't just put the new engine in the Metro and sell it with a Rover badge. They had to do other things, and one of the things that they did were these seats. And they're so comfortable. I, I, I've not sat in a seat in any other car that is noticeably more comfortable than these seats. And yeah, the headrests are a problem, but when you're driving, you don't tend to use the headrests. I know some people do when they're, when they're on motorways, and like that, they like to lean back slightly, but I don't, so it's not an issue for me. Over the summer, I drove 1,300 miles in five days, and only after I'd been driving for about six hours did I start to get some backache. These seats are genuinely very good. There's no lumbar support or anything like that, but the bolsters are big enough to hold you in round the corners. But they aren't obtrusive enough to take away from the comfort like in many modern cars. And the seat base is at the right height to support my thighs, and it's just really comfortable. It's a lovely place to be. Brilliant. 30 mile an hour, and you can make it make mad revving noises. They aren't sports car noises, it's just sweet, happy, high pitch noises. All the hyperbole, all of the hyperbole. The driving position itself is okay, if not exemplary. The pedals are in a nice place and have a nice amount of weight to them, but they're too small and close together if you're wearing boots. There's also no dead pedal, but my left foot naturally goes around and under the clutch pedal. It's not ideal, but I'm sure the design has intended you to do this. The steering wheel isn't the bus driver-like position of Minis and A-Series metros, but it is laughable how off-centre it is. It's practically over my left leg, which means your right shoulder has to pivot slightly away from the seat back. If you're driving a straight line, you can start to feel your, your right arm going after an hour or so. The wheel is also slightly too far away from me in my driving position, meaning I have to move my shoulders forward slightly to get my hand on top of the wheel. It's very close, but it's not quite perfect for me. If you've got longer arms, then it would probably be perfect, but it's 95% of the way there. And the clutch has a bit of weight to it. It's not a very light clutch, but it's also not a very heavy clutch. I think it's just that perfect in between where it won't wear you out in traffic, but at the same time, you can feel what it's doing. It feels like it's got something to it. It's got some force to it. Maybe it could do with being a little bit heavier, but then, if it was a little bit heavier, I might like it less in traffic, so... You know, swings and roundabouts. You can't get everything perfect. And the steering is maybe a little bit too light, actually. I am going to go out and say that its steering is too light, despite the fact there's no power steering. Obviously, it would be silly to have power steering in a, in a car this size. But... It's weighted quite nicely when you're, at, at, when you're at town speed, so it's very easy to drive in town, uh, and it's very easy to park. The lack of power steering you don't notice ever. Again, camera on the piss, there you go, that's better. You just don't notice that it's not got power steering. Um, and there are stories on the internet of people who've bought sons and daughters metros as first cars, and then they've complained that it's got no power steering, and they've clearly not driven it because you don't need it. But it is just an innocent, fun little car. I love it. Oh, so good. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't swap this car for anything else. And a year ago, maybe I would have done. But 
the more I've driven it, the more I've fallen in love with it, the more it's brought me under its spell. And I just, I mean, I, I, I've got up at eight o'clock on a Sunday morning to come and do this video and drive this car. But even if I wasn't doing the video, I probably would have got up anyway, because it's just such a nice car to drive. And if you doubt anything that I'm saying, then that's completely fair enough. If you've driven a well-sorted K-Series Metro recently, then that's fine. But if you haven't, drive one. Seriously, just, just, just drive one. It's so much more fun than I was expecting it to be. The Metro is not the perfect car. It has loads of niggly things that annoy, like those trim rattles. Some of them you'll notice quickly, and others you'd only realise once you've been driving it for a few days. But it makes me happy every time I see it, and every time I drive it. Hopefully I've been able to show you why I think that, because it is a belting little car to thrash about, and it broadens your horizons to so many new experiences and so many new people through ownership of any car with such a healthy following. The car that you drive should be one that makes you happy, and the Metro makes me happy. If you don't glance back at your car, you've brought the wrong one. I wouldn't swap it for anything else, and that's the highest praise you can give to a car.